Yeah, Jalen Hurts for the you know Eagles had um, got like interviewed after practices or something like that, and they were asking about the new offense, uh, you know, with the new offensive coordinator. And uh, check this out. Yeah, I think I think you know this whole entire off season, um, it's been about learning, um, learning, learning, and taking in a new knowledge, new perspective, um, and the minds that we have in the room. Um, and I think throughout the whole entire thing, that's kind of been the emphasis. You know, you get to a point where you kind of feel, um, hey, I'm gonna I'm I'm feel comfortable with this, I'm gonna like this, but um, that time comes where you can rep it, rep it, rep it later on. But, you know, right now, it's been a, um, been a lot of new inventory in. Um, majority of it, you know, probably 95% of it being new. Um, 95% right, right there, Bailey. Yep. 95% of it being new, uh, Sean. Explain to Smitty and explain to everybody out there the install process. And uh, Smitty, we can break it down, but the install process for a new coordinator coming into a new team, not just getting the QB to understand the verbiage, the signs, the, the language, the the uh, everything that's entailed with it. And, and number one, I, I always install inside out, making sure that we install the protection first with the Q, especially – and then tie that in with the inside run game, tie that in with the RPO and the play pass or the ride and glide or whatever you want to call it. And then we throw our outside zone and outside run game in with boots and naked. I've always been that type of installer. Um, where are you at with this 95% of the, t of the offense being new and, and changed and, and, and he can handle it. Uh, Jalen Hurts is a very, very cerebral kid. It's not a, it, I don't see him having any issues. Do you think it's a good thing that we're basically throwing out the old, all new? Uh, where are you at with that take? Hurts is pissed off. He mm. mad. I, he mad as a damn shit. Pit bull has been on the leash and finally got off to see some dogs he don't know. Like he pissed off. When you sign a five year, $255 million contract, the last damn thing you want to do every freaking offseason is learn a new offense. Mm. He went to the Super Bowl with Shane Steichen. Instead of that offseason being able to really hone in on what he did well and did bad, he had to learn all the new things Brian Johnson wanted to put in. That experiment didn't work. Now, after getting this big money, after playing an MVP caliber game in the Super Bowl, he got to spend his offseason learning a whole nother system? That's three in three years. And I know Brian's system was completely different than Steichen's, but it was different. And he's pissed off. You don't sign a guy to a quarter billion dollars and then tell him you got to spend every offseason learning. That you can see it. He's pissed off. This offseason should not be about terminology and new concepts and trying to figure out what Kelly Moore wants and thinks. This should be about him refining the things he does really well and improving the things that he struggled with last year. I had to deal with it. I had four coordinators my first four years in Tampa. As a rookie quarterback, JB, I had Mike Shula. Second year quarterback, I had Les Steckle. Third mm. year quarterback, I had Clyde Christensen. Fourth year, I had John Gruden. I know what that's like. It's not fun. It, it, it's not fun, especially, and I didn't, hell, I didn't even make the five year part of his 255 million. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want to be in that building going through all this terminology. And he pissed off, you could tell. It's Let me ask you this, because I think experience is the best teacher. So, like, when you were going through that that new offense, how long did it take you within that season to really get to a point where, like, okay, I'm. Now I'm comfortable, and now I fully understand the actual offense. Like, did you did you get to that point before the season started, or did it actually take a few games for you to be like, all right, now I'm finally in the flow? Shit, based on the fact that I got fired after my first year starting, hell, I guess I didn't really get a chance to find out the second time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, I mean, it, it, it's not ideal. I'm just telling you, and it's not about how long it takes you to learn it. It's about the frustration of having to even attempt to learn it. Right, right. Because there's only like three or four like systems in the National Football League. Like they all come from these trees, right? Mm. Like you got the Andy Reid tree over here. You know, then you got the Patriot tree over here. Like it's not a whole bunch of Shanahan, different offensive yeah. schemes. Yeah. It's just the terminology is different. And when you yeah. call one thing scat, it sucks to have to go in and mentally switch it to switch. Mm. 
Right, right, right. So let me ask you this uh, real quick. I'm let you jump in, JB. Should we be concerned for Jalen Hurts and the Eagles in terms of them having another quote unquote down year? I know last year they went 11 and six, I believe, and made it to the playoffs. But all year long, even with those wins, we were, we were you guys are watching the games. They didn't really look like the Eagles from the previous season, and obviously got knocked out pretty you know pretty quickly there in the playoffs. Like with this going on and 95 percent of the offense being new, like are, do you have concerns? Absolutely, because if Jalen Hurts is pissed, what do you think A.J. Brown is? The only person who's probably not mad is Saquon Barkley because he just gotten us. So he knew he had to learn a new system anyway, and he's glad to be from behind Daniel Jones. But, you know, that's the thing probably concerns me the most with the Eagles, their mental, I guess, togetherness. They just don't seem like they like each other. They don't seem like they like being in Philly. Uh, Siriano has to have a life coach on the sideline on game day to keep him, like, emotionally – Intact, like there's a lot going on there in Philly. Mm. Let me ask you that picture right there. If you saw it, he is apparently rumors are he's added a bunch of muscle, and I don't like that arm look. Uh, as a quarterback, if I was coaching him, I wouldn't like it. But can you explain and what's your take? Do you think that's nothing, or do you think that's a, a, a restraint on a quarterback? Like, like we both played it, we understand in shape is one thing, but. To the naysayers out there in the contracts, uh, contrary to belief that don't understand, muscle is a deterrent to quarterbacks' fluidity in releases and throwing the football. And if you look at the greats and Rodgers and Brady and all these guys, there ain't a piece of muscle-looking thing on their arms. Do you think this is something that could be a, a something to look out for or is not no big deal at all because this is what he's used to? Not for him because of his history. Yeah, I mean, wasn't he like a state champion, like a – Weightlifter coming out of high school or something crazy. His dad, his dad's a trainer like that, yeah. Yeah, so he's always he, been strong as hell, really. Yeah. <laughs> all, all he probably did was alter his diet some, so it just looks more ripped up. But I bet weight wise, he's lifting the same thing as always lifted. I'd probably be more worried about Bryce because Bryce Young looks like he put on some weight and he's never looked like that. Mm. But how it's going to impact him? Because if I was Bryce, I would have told him to mimic Drew Brees. Like Brees never really put on weight. He just started really getting into yoga and flexibility and making sure that he recovered a certain way. So it'd probably be more, I guess, interesting how it impacts Bryce than Jalen. Jalen's always been a weightlifting guy. 